Let's take a look at a couple of examples of improper integrals with discontinuities. And again, when you first look at this example, there's no obvious reason that it would be improper unless you look closely. The infinite bounds of integration are much more explicit. As soon as you see those, you recognize that something special is going on. But here, if you didn't recognize this, you might just integrate and plug in your bounds of integration as normal and miss the fact that this needs to be handled with a limit because there's a discontinuity that we need to deal with. So specifically, look at this function 1 over the square root of x minus 2 and think about the domain of this function. If x equals 2, then we would be dividing by 0, which is a problem, so 2 is not in the domain. And if x is less than 2, then we would be taking the square root of negative numbers because we'd be taking something less than 2 and subtracting 2 from it, getting a negative answer, and then taking a square root. So 2 or anything smaller is not allowed in this function. The domain is anything larger than 2. So since our bounds of integration go from 2 to 5, we have an issue at the lower bound. And if you're thinking ahead, when we take this limit, Think about the fact that a one-sided limit is especially important here because nothing to the left of 2 is defined for this function. So we'll get to that in a minute, but you can already start thinking ahead about that. Again, we recognize that we're going to need to do the indefinite integral and then deal with the bounds of integration using a limit. So let's separate the two problems and do the indefinite integral here off to the side just so we keep things straight. This one again requires u substitution. You may be able to do it without writing down the full u substitution problem, but I'll write it down just so that we can have it as clear as possible. We want to let u equal x minus 2, which means that du equals dx. This integral then turns into 1 over the square root of u du, or u to the negative one-half power du, which we can integrate using the power rule, and that gives us u to the one-half divided by one-half, or 2u to the one-half, which we'll rewrite as 2 times the square root of x minus 2, as we replace u with x minus 2 again. So the antiderivative of 1 over the square root of x minus 2 is simply 2 times the square root of x minus 2. Now let's deal with these limits of integration using what we know about improper integrals. Again, recognizing that the problem occurs at one of the boundaries, that means we can replace that problem bound with t. and then take the limit as t approaches 2 and specifically as it approaches 2 from the right side because if you visualize this number line the range from 2 to 5 and again recognize that the whole occurs at x equals 2 we want to take our variable t and let it approach 2 specifically from the right hand side. And again, the limit as t approaches 2 from both sides doesn't exist because nothing to the left of 2 is allowed on that function. So specifically, we're using the limit as t approaches 2 from the right. And that's important. It's significant to recognize that. So now we can carry out the integral We've already done this off to the side, so we know this equals 2 times the square root of x minus 2 evaluated from t to 5. And then if we plug in those bounds, we get 2 times the square root of 5 minus 2, or 3, 
minus 2 times the square root of t minus 2. Now again, think about what happens as t approaches 2 from the right, so we're plugging in values that are slightly larger than 2 and getting closer to 2. And every time we're going to subtract 2. So if we plug in 2.1, we'll subtract 2 and get 0 0.1. If we plug in 2.01, we'll subtract 2 and get 0 0.01 and so on. And as we plug in values that get closer and closer to 2, as we subtract 2 each time, our answers will get closer and closer to 0. And then taking the square root of those will still give us answers closer and closer to 0. So that portion approaches 0, which means our full answer is simply 2 times the square root of 3. So this is a convergent improper integral, and it converges to the value 2 square root of 3. We can do another one. which includes a little bit more. This time let's take the integral from negative two to infinity of one over x plus one quantity squared. Now notice again that right away you can recognize this one as an improper integral because of that infinite upper limit. But there's a more subtle piece that's also hiding here. There's also a discontinuity in this function. If you look carefully, that denominator would equal zero when x equals negative one, which means that negative one does not belong to the domain. There is a discontinuity there. And since negative one is between negative two and positive infinity, that's something we need to worry about. So this time, if you visualize the interval where we're integrating, we're starting at negative two and we're going all the way up to infinity at negative one, there's a discontinuity, there's a hole. Which means we actually need to deal with both the discontinuity and the upper limit of infinity. So there's two reasons that this one is improper and both of them need to be dealt with individually. So think carefully for a minute about how many integrals we're going to need as we split this up. First of all, we're going to need 1 to take us from negative 2 to negative 1 because we need to split this interval at negative 1 so that that discontinuity happens at an endpoint. So we'll start with an integral from negative 2 to negative 1. And then we'll deal with that discontinuity at negative 1 by using a limit. Then we could have an integral from negative one to infinity, but think about what's happening here. Now we have both bounds, both limits of integration, needing a limit as t approaches something, which again means we actually need to split this up into two pieces. Just like when we had the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity, we had to split that into two pieces the same thing holds here. So we actually need a total of three integrals. This just means I need to split it somewhere between negative one and infinity. So I need to pick a point here, anywhere between negative one and infinity, and split this into distinct sections so that the upper limit of this integral is non-problematic. It's one that we can simply plug in. We don't need a limit for and the lower bound of this integral is the same thing, something we don't need a limit for, because we can only apply one limit to an integral at a time. So we'll have three separate integrals, and I'll just pick zero somewhat arbitrarily. It's an easy one to use, but you could use anything between negative one and infinity. You could use one or 10 or 100 or anything you like in that range. And it turns out that it will subtract and cancel from those two integrals. So it doesn't really matter, but for purposes of writing it out and being clear in our work, it's helpful to pick a point between negative one and infinity like this.
So we'll have a second integral from negative one to zero. And again, the zero is chosen more or less arbitrarily. And then a third integral from zero to infinity. And each one of these will need a limit to go with it. So here on this first one, we have a discontinuity at the upper endpoint. So we need to replace the negative one with t and have a limit as t approaches negative one specifically from the left because that's the upper endpoint. For the next integral, we have a discontinuity at the lower endpoint. So we'll again replace negative one with t and now have a limit as t approaches negative one but from the right side since that's the lower endpoint of that section of the interval. And then lastly, we'll have a limit. And here the problem is this upper infinite limit. So we'll replace that with t and take a limit as t approaches infinity. And then we can integrate and evaluate all of these limits. So I'll go through and finish out the problem just to give more practice dealing with limits like this. But the hard work is done. This setup is the hard part, figuring out how to separate this into pieces, and really it boils down to the need to only deal with one limit at a time. We can't have multiple limits on the same integral. That gets too confusing. So I'll note here at the beginning that the indefinite integral, again, you can do this using u substitution, but I won't take the time to do it. It works out to negative one over x plus one. And then of course it would be plus c, except that we're doing definite integrals so we can leave that off. So that means here on this first limit, we'll have the limit as t approaches negative one from the left of negative one over x plus one evaluated from negative two to t. Then the middle limit is similar. And here the lower bound is t and the upper bound is zero. And lastly, we have a limit as t approaches infinity evaluated from zero to t. So there's a lot of repetition and you might see these pieces start to cancel each other at one point or another. So here All of this equals the first term as we plug in t, we get negative one over t plus one. When we plug in negative two, we get negative two plus one. And of course, when we subtract that middle operation turns to addition as we subtract a negative. And then the next limit will look like negative one over zero plus one minus a negative. So again, plus one over t plus one. And lastly, we'll have negative one over t plus one minus a negative. So plus one over zero plus one. So really we just have to deal with these three pieces and think about in each case what happens as t approaches the appropriate value. So let's look at this first one. As t approaches negative one, what happens to this? First of all, notice that the denominator will approach zero. So as soon as you recognize that the denominator is approaching zero and the numerator is constant, that means that limit is gonna be infinite somehow. And we just need to figure out whether it's going to be positive infinity or negative infinity. So here, if we're approaching negative one from the left-hand side, we're plugging in values slightly less than negative one and adding one to them. So those answers here in the denominator will be very small, very close to zero, but all negative. So again, this direction that we're using for the limit is very significant because it tells us whether our answers are positive or negative. We're plugging in values slightly less than negative one, 
So when we add one, we get values slightly less than zero, slightly negative. When you combine that with the negative sign in front, those will be positive, and so this first piece approaches positive infinity. So it's important that you can run through that kind of calculation and just see, is it approaching some finite value? Is it approaching infinity? And is it approaching positive or negative infinity? In this case, it's positive infinity. For the next one, now if we plug in values close to negative one, but slightly larger, and we add one to them, we'll get numbers slightly larger than zero. So still approaching zero, but from the positive side. So all those answers will be positive, which means that when we divide one by these very small values, we're approaching infinity, and again, positive infinity, because all of those values in the denominator are positive, and there's a positive here, and so on. So this is also approaching positive infinity. And then lastly, this last term, as we plug in larger and larger values for t approaching infinity, that denominator approaches infinity, and the numerator is constant, so that all approaches zero. So that term disappears. We have a few finite terms mixed in, but the important piece is we have two pieces going to positive infinity, which means that our final answer is positive infinity. This is a divergent improper integral. The answer is infinity. So there are a few more examples that I'll write down here at the end of the notes that you should go through on your own and practice and make sure you can follow. But this example illustrates all the different pieces all at once. So if you can do this example with the multiple breaks and the infinite upper limit as well as the discontinuities, you should be able to handle all of the examples to follow.